All right. Hello, everybody. Welcome to Head and Chick Studio. What's inside matters when we're talking about batting. Um, we are so excited to have Stephanie Hackney with us from Hobbs, and I know she is going to give us a lot of information. And Stephanie, I am going to um, make you uh, the presenter and give this all to you and let you take it over. How does that sound? Sounds great. Awesome. And I'll be I'll be in the background watching. And if there's anything I can do to help, you just let me know. Okay. All righty. Well, hello, everybody. It, it seems very strange to be doing this during the daylight hours. Normally, I'm doing these in the evening, and it's quite dark <laughs> in here, and I have to use a ton of lights. Uh, so it's really nice to have some nice sunshine coming in. And I hope you're all uh, having a great week so far. And we're going to go ahead and get started. So just a quick intro. Uh, my name is Stephanie Hackney, and I'm the Director of Sales and Marketing for Hobbs Bonded Fibers. And we are what is known as a, a non-woven textiles firm. And what that means is that we make products uh, with fibers like you could make with weaving, like with fabric. Uh, however, we don't weave them. So we're using loose products and we're using a variety of different methods to put those together into what you know as batting. Um, and we have been uh, in business since 1953. We've been in Waco, Texas and making batting since 1978. So a little more than uh, 40 years making batting. Uh, and I would imagine most of you are very familiar with our Heirloom 8020. Uh, that is still our most popular brand and the most stocked batting in long arm shops. Um, but what we'd like to talk about today are is that, but also all the other fibers that we have available and all the different types of blends and batting that you can buy and why it might be important to choose a different batting. So we're going to split this into a few sections. The first section, we're going to talk about the five questions that we ask quilters when they are needing help determining what type of batting to buy for their quilt or quilted project. And then next, we are going to go into each of the fiber groupings. So we're going to start with polyester, we're going to go to our cottons, then cotton blends, and then wool and silk. And these are roughly in the order of lowest cost to most expensive. But I think it's very important to point out that just because we're at a low cost does not mean low quality. We use only the best input products to make our battings, uh, and we are always striving to make sure that they are going to be the highest quality so that you can have heirloom quilts if that's what you're going after. And if they're just everyday quilts, maybe they're charity quilts or quilts you're not really going to keep forever, um, then the important thing to know is that they will hold up. Um, and they will perform beautifully. And each batting is going to affect the way the quilt turns out. So I want to start with one quick thing. Behind me, you'll notice there's a banner. Now, I'm sorry if it's backwards to you, but uh, you'll notice that it says Hobbs, and then above it says Heirloom, and at the bottom it says Tuscany. So Heirloom is the brand that we started our batting business with, and Tuscany is a newer line. And I want to clarify that they are actually two separate product lines. So Heirloom products are going to look like this. Right, They look sort of like a tube, like a cinnamon roll at the end. And these products uh, are all finished uh, on the production line and they're rolled very tightly compressed into these bags. You may have a little wrinkling and creasing in the batting when you take it out of the bag and that's quite normal. Now we have a second product line and that is called Tuscany. And what you'll notice about these is that they look quite different in the way they're packaged. So they are either uh, square or rectangular in shape and they are folded rather than being rolled. And you'll also notice that there's a lot of extra air in this bag that is done purposefully. That's not a mistake. Um, we actually hand cut, hand fold and hand package the Tuscany products. And their packages have a double-sided insert slid in rather than the bag being printed directly with the information. Um, but on every package, you're going to find information on the product, on the fiber, uh, how far apart to stitch, how much it shrinks, what it's best for, and then how to use it and how to care for your quilt that's made with it. 
that information also exists up on our website. So there's a separate product page for every single product we make. And you'll find that at hobsbatting.com forward slash products. Now I know that Heidi did bring in a lot of fun products. We had a long conversation about some of our best selling and most unique products and products that people once they find out about them really want to try. Um, so I do encourage you to, to chat with her about the different products she's brought in. And I do know that she's offering a special code uh, that you'll be able to use through uh, May 5th, which is tomorrow, Cinco de Mayo. So we're going to go ahead and get started. Now I want to start with our reference sheet. So we have a product reference sheet. I believe this was emailed out to everybody who signed up, but if you did not get a chance to get this, if you go to hobsbatting.com forward slash products, scroll down the page, you will find this grid sheet. You can click on it and it will pop up. You can download it, you can print it, you can share it. Um, and this is a wonderful little chart to have. So if you wanna print it out, take your notes directly on this, that's great. But there's a couple columns on here that are really important, and I will refer to those as we start getting into the different battings. One of those is the shrinkage rate, right? How much does the product shrink uh, when you wash it? And, and that means washing inside of a quilt. We do not recommend pre-washing any of our battings. And then there's another column that's all about stitching and how far apart we recommend you stitch. Now, normally when I can see the audience and we're doing this on Zoom or I'm at a quilt show, I will ask for a show of hands of how many of you follow the stitch guideline. And I will tell you that it's never more than 20% of the audience. Um, and when I first started lecturing for Hobbs, I was kind of, oh no. <laughs> so I want to bring up why that is important. Here's why, because when we develop a product, we actually sew it into a little quilt, right? We make that initial run of batting we sew it into a little quilt and we test it. We will test the quilt. We're going to wash it and dry it many times. Um, and then we're going to be pulling on it, yanking on it, treating it just like a normal quilt will get treated. And then we take that quilt sample apart. And what we're looking for is at what point do we see any stress on the batting? So if we've stitched it every three inches, four inches, five inches, and at three inches, it looks great. At four inches, it looks great. And at five inches, maybe even six inches, when we open that sample up, we see some stress in the batting, then we will recommend a stitch width of four inches, right? Because we always want to err a little on the side of caution. We want to make sure that your batting is going to hold up. The Hobbs family was a family of quilters. And so, you know, we understand how much time and energy and love and possibly money goes into making a quilt. So we want to make sure that your quilts will hold up over time, especially if you'd like them to be a family heirloom. So it is critically important that you follow the stitch guideline. So if we say four inches, please stitch every four inches or tighter together, closer together, right? And that means in each direction, four inches this way, four inches this way. Now you may have a project that you're going to make that requires more open space, right? Let's say that you have a design that basically you're not gonna stitch, but every five or six inches. Well, we do make some battings that allow you to stitch further apart. And we'll talk about each of those as we go through the product lineup. But the goal really today is I want you to understand the fibers. I want you to understand how each type of fiber affects the outcome of the quilt, whether that's the weight of the quilt, the strength of the quilt, the warmth of the quilt, uh, what the quilt is going to look like, whether it's got a smooth finish or a traditional puckered look. Um, and every time we're always choosing battings to try to get you to the place you want to be with your quilt. So if you were to say to me, well, I want a quilt that's got a lot of open space and I want it to be really smooth, that immediately eliminates battings, which is a good thing, right? We always want to get down to one or two that are the best rather than having you look at seven and try to figure out which one right? They're all going to have pros. They will all have what we refer to as potential cons. And what I mean by that is it may or may not be a con depending on your specific um, project, use case, etc. So let's go ahead and start with the five questions. The first question is, what are you making? And you may think, well, that's really obvious, right? Obviously, you need to focus on what you're making. Well, if you tell me you're making something for yourself, let's say you're making a bedspread for yourself, okay? Then you could use any batting you wanted, 
right? And I would give you the pros and cons of each one of the different types, and then you could make a choice. If you're making something for another quilter, pretty much the same thing, because as quilters, if I tell you that if you use this batting, you need to wash that quilt in cold water on a delicate cycle and it's best to air dry it, then you're likely to do that. But let's say you're making a charity quilt. Let's say you're making a quilt for a college kid going off to college for the first time, never done their own laundry, right? That's a very different kind of use case, right? And we're gonna talk about use cases. So it's very important to focus on what you're making. If you tell me you're making a bedspread and you tell me that you want it to drape beautifully and that you're going to do a lot of stitching on it, that is a very specific request. And then we are gonna narrow battings down very quickly because there are only a couple battings that are really well suited to giving you both features, right? And we're gonna talk about battings that will actually not work well in that scenario. So what are you making is the first thing. Second is, who is it for, right? So who are you making this project for? Is it for you? Is it for another quilter? Is it for a baby? Is it for a child? Is it for uh, like a utility quilt? Maybe it's gonna be a picnic blanket and you're gonna throw it in the back of the car and it's gonna get probably a lot of use and abuse, probably need to be washed often because it'll be on the ground, might get things spilled on it. You may need to wash it warm to get stains out, right? Um, when you are making quilts for other people, you always need to ask a lot of questions. And I recommend asking the same questions I'm asking you. So if you're making a quilt for someone else and you say to them, you know, look, I wanna make you a really nice quilt. What would you like in it, right? If they say, I want a heavy quilt, you ask whether they're talking weight heavy or warmth heavy because people often use that interchangeably and they may mean that they really want a lot of weight but they don't want it to be all that warm or they may want it to be really warm but they don't want a lot of weight, right? You have somebody who has strength or dexterity issues, it may be very challenging for them to move around a very heavy quilt. So there are certain battings will tell you to stay away from because they tend to be a heavier fiber. So what are you making, who's it for? Next question, what is the use case? So how is the quilt going to be used and in what environment? So let's go back to the college kid, right? Let's say you're making a t-shirt quilt, right? All their sports uh, t-shirts from their high school years and they're gonna take it off to college with them. Well, if they wash it at all and they don't just bring it home on spring break, um, they are probably going to throw it in a big industrial washing machine, right? With their jeans and shirts and sweatshirts and whatever else they're wearing. And they're probably not going to pay a whole lot of attention to the settings on the washing machine. So there are specific battings that we recommend because we know if they wash it in the worst way, the batting's still going to hold up. There are certain battings that we will tell you to stay away from because we know that if you use those battings, chances are they will ruin the quilt right? Maybe not initially, but over time. So again, we're always thinking about that environment, right? What's the use case? If you're making charity quilts, right? Are they for kids? Maybe kids in foster care. Are they for the elderly? Are they for babies in a NICU, right? That use case matters. Anytime you're making a charity quilt, you need to reach out to the charity and understand what they will and will not accept. Because a lot of times, uh, the charity may say, we don't take anything that's not 100% natural fiber, or we don't take polyester, or, you know, we want this specific type of product used because that's easiest for us to care for in the NICU. Um, keep in mind, anytime you're making a charity quilt, generally, especially if it's going to a hospital, they are going to wash the quilt before it's used in the NICU or in the kids ward. And when they do that, they're going to wash it in the hospital laundry, which are like big boilers, right? Very, very hot. The idea, disinfect, get the germs out. So you need to be thinking about that because if you make a really nice charity quilt or a really nice NICU quilt, and it is a batting that we tell you cannot be washed in hot water, they could ruin the quilt first time out. So that's something to keep in mind as well. Another thing to think about is what is the finish that you want on the quilt, right? Remember earlier I mentioned that you may want a lot of space or a little space. Um, you need to be thinking about that. So are you, are you going to, uh, let's say that you're making a modern quilt, right? And let's say that, uh, you want some open space in the design, or let's say that it's got a lot of light fabrics on the front and a lot of dark on the back. 
it's important to know that when you're choosing batting because there are only certain battings that allow you to stitch much further apart and have the quilt really hold together. If you're making a quilt that's going to be tied, again, same thing. Uh, think about if you want a really flat, smooth surface or if you really like the traditional quilt look, right? That puckered, old-fashioned look, right? That is especially important if you pre-wash fabrics. So if you're someone who pre-washes your fabric, but you want a really smooth surface on your quilt, you really only have one choice, and that is to use a non-shrinking batting. Because when you put a shrinking batting behind fabric that's already been washed and isn't gonna shrink anymore, when that batting shrinks, it's actually gonna pull in on the fabric and that is gonna cause the traditional puckering. Now, if that's what you want, that's great. But if you want a really smooth finish, that may be a really bad day, right, when you see that. So again, think about the surface of the quilt. Also think about the amount of piecing and stitching that you're going to use. If you really want your piecing and your stitching to pop, right, you want a lot of texture and dimension, then there are specific battings, which we call high loft, right, they're puffy or loftier battings. Those are the ones we recommend for that kind of a quilt because you want to make sure that the batting is actually gonna puff between the stitch lines and show off all that work that you've put into the quilt. Now, let's say you want a super smooth surface, right? But let's say you also are gonna be stitching a lot. Well, if you really want your stitching to stand out, but you don't want a lot of puff, then we have specific low loft or thin battings that you can use that will show off your stitching without a lot of puff. Okay, so that's our fourth question. And our final question is, what is the care environment? So again, child doing laundry for the first time, charity quilt where you may not be able to dictate how the quilt is gonna be cared for, right? Whether it's washed and or dried. Um, also, is somebody going to maybe want to dry clean a quilt? Uh, we don't recommend quilts be dry cleaned. And I'm gonna talk a little bit about our recommendations for care of batting as we talk about each batting. Um, but you need to think about the care environment and not just in terms of washing it and or drying a quilt, but think about if you're making something, let's say you're making a wedding gift for a young couple, right? They've got an apartment, it's small, and let's say they live in a hot, humid environment. Well, if you make them a big bedspread and you put something like cotton in it, so now you've got cotton thread, cotton fabric, cotton batting, it is going to take a long time to dry. So they're going to need to dry it, right? And cotton batting can be washed and dried, that's fine. All of our battings can be machine washed once they're in a quilt. But if you're making a quilt for somebody and you're putting wool or silk in it, those require special washing and that, and then they should be air dried. And that may not be possible for that environment. Right? It may be that the apartment's too small to lay the quilt out. It may be that it's really hot and humid and it may take a long time to dry. Now, the upside of wool and silk is that they are natural fibers, but they wick moisture and they actually dry very quickly. Your fabric will take much longer to dry than your batting will. But again, always be thinking about the care environment, right? Or how you expect that the recipient of the quilt is going to care for the quilt. Now, if you're making quilts for yourself, Whatever instructions I give you, most likely you're going to follow because you know how much you've put into this quilt and you're going to want to take care of it. Now, we do get asked a lot, what do we recommend for quilts in terms of care? We recommend cold water, delicate cycle, and no heavy agitation or spin. So if you have a top loader, an older one with an agitation uh, bar that comes up, um, you don't want that quilt to be heavily spun up up on by that agitator. If you have a front loader, right, that heavily spins things to dry them, same thing. Now, one thing you can think about is if you put it on a delicate cycle, generally, it's not going to do that much agitation or spinning. Um, but some people prefer when they get it to that point that they actually let it spin just a teeny bit and then they take it out and they'll kind of press it out with towels and then air dry it. Now, we also recommend that quilts be air dried if you can, but we know the reality, right? If you're making a baby quilt and you've got a tired mom, the last thing she wants to do is have to worry about how a quilt gets washed when it gets stained or it gets spit up on. 
right? So with baby quilts, kids quilts, utility quilts, anything that is gonna have a lot of use and need to be washed a lot, um, again, we still recommend that same type of washing, but just know that we would recommend battings that can be washed in warm water because you may need to wash them in warm water uh, to get stains out of the fabric. Now, people ask us, what do we recommend? Orvis, Orvis paste is what we recommend for washing the quilts or a very gentle, gentle detergent. Um, there are some great companies that have gentle detergents. Um, and if anybody's interested in that, you can put a question um, up. And Heidi is actually monitoring questions. So if you have questions throughout the lecture, you can post those. Normally we have them go into the chat in Zoom, which is where I'm at, um, but they are gonna be put posted in Facebook and then Heidi will actually ask me those at the end. So if you have a question, don't hesitate to put it in there. And if Heidi thinks it's relevant where we're at in the lecture, she'll ask me right away. Otherwise we'll cover those at the end. And you will be able to get my personal contact information and you can email and call me anytime and ask questions. I do give out my cell phone number and my email address because I often uh, have time with people when they're in a store, right? Let's say you're in a store and you're making a quilt and you've got a pattern and fabric and thread and you're trying to decide what batting to buy. You can call us, uh, you can call me directly, you can call our office and we'll try to step you through those questions and we'll try to help you narrow down the choices so you can pick a batting. So what are you making? Who's it for? What's the use case? What type of finish do you want on it? And what are the care instructions or what's the care environment, right? So that's where we start. Now we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna jump into fiber types. So we're going to have polyester, cotton, cotton blend, wool, and silk. And we're gonna go ahead and start with polyesters. And I will tell you most of the time, I do a little survey again, and I will ask how many of you use polyester? And it's generally a very small percentage. And I think some of that has to do with maybe somebody had a bad experience with a really inexpensive polyester many years ago, uh, or people have just heard bad things about polyester. What I want you to understand about polyester is it can be an amazing fiber to use in a quilt and it can deliver tremendous results. It may be the least expensive of the battings we make, that doesn't mean it's the lowest quality because we use a very high denier polyester, which is a very fine, very soft, very strong fiber. So we're gonna go ahead and start talking about polyesters and I will show you samples of each of the ones we make so that you can see the thickness on those. But just keep in mind, you cannot tell how a batting is going to perform just by looking, or feel, looking at it or feeling it, right? Some of our battings, change immediately once they are washed in the quilt. Silk is a great example of that. What it looks like in its raw form versus what it's gonna look like in a quilt after one washing, night and day. So just keep that in mind. So we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna talk about the uh, pros and cons of polyester. And again, these are potential cons because they may or may not matter depending on what you're making, who it's for, et cetera. So polyester number one is inexpensive right? Not cheap, but inexpensive. Um, and it is a lightweight fiber. So if you're looking to make a really big quilt, let's say a t-shirt quilt, right? Something that, or a denim quilt, something that's inherently heavy because of all the cotton fabric, you will want to choose a light batting because that quilt is already gonna be very heavy, especially if you make it a queen or a king size quilt. And again, think about who you're making it for. If you're making it for somebody who doesn't have a lot of upper body strength, right? You don't want the quilt to be difficult for them to pull up and down because chances are then they're not going to use it. So polyester is lightweight. It's also strong. It's a very strong fiber. And as we go through the different ones, you'll see that there's one that we actually allow you to stitch up to nine inches apart instead of every four inches. What that indicates is the strength of that fiber and the way that that uh, batting is actually made. So for instance, we have a product called Thermor. Uh, if you look on your chart, it's the fourth from the top under the polyester section, and it is a very strong batting. I, I refer to it as the indestructible batting, because really if we've got an, a, a quilter that we're talking to and they give me uh, kind of the rundown of what they're trying to make, and I think that the batting is really going to take a lot of use and abuse, maybe not be washed 
all that well, um, then I will generally recommend Thermor because I know it's gonna hold up, right? A queen size bat of Thermor doesn't weigh any more than this pair of scissors. So that's a really great thing to know because you can get a really beautiful quilt that's lightweight. Now, keep in mind that that doesn't necessarily mean the quilt won't be warm because the quilt can actually be quite warm without weight. Polyester is a great example of that. One thing to note about polyester is that it holds in the heat. It has high insulation properties. So once your body temperature warms up, that polyester will hold in the heat. So if you're making a ski jacket, right, you put polyester batting in it, it's going to be quite warm. As soon as your body temperature warms up, it gets into that polyester batting and it just insulates you. Now, if you're in Minnesota in the winter, Iowa in the winter, Michigan in the winter, right, that makes sense. But if you're in Texas in the summer, we would never put polyester in something like that because it is much too hot and often humid to use that kind of fiber. Again, it doesn't mean that that's a con necessarily. It depends on what you're making, who it's for, use case, uh, environment it's gonna be used in, et cetera. If you want to have something that you can use year round and you're in an environment where the temperature changes, right, where you have real four seasons and maybe it's gonna be real hot and, hum and humid in the summer, like it can get in Iowa, um, and you want to use it year round, um, then I recommend probably some of our other battings, right? Because the polyester will be great in the cooler months, but it's probably going to be too warm in the summer months. And again, we'll talk about the other fibers. So again, it's inexpensive, it's lightweight, it's strong, it has great insulating properties. And the great thing is we make a variety of lofts, right? And lofts are the thicknesses. How thin or puffy uh, is the batting? And I'm gonna show you some different samples of that now so you can see that. So that first one that we talked about was called Thermor. And uh, these are samples that we have of our batting. And I've got a really great surprise at the end of the, at the, end of the lecture. So don't leave before the end because I've got a great surprise about how you can get uh, your hand on a sample of all of our battings. Um, so this is Thermor and it is relatively thin, right? It doesn't have a lot of loft. Um, it is strong, right? You can pull on this, pull on this, nothing happens. It doesn't stretch out of shape and it's very soft, right? But it does have also a little bit of structure to it. So if you hold it up to the side, you'll notice that it's got a little structure. So that structure is great depending on what you're making. Let's say that you're making placemats or a table runner or a wall hanging. The structure can be really nice for that because it'll help it to, to lay really nice or hang really nice. Um, and it's gonna stay really squared up, right? I know probably most of us when we've made a quilt have had an issue at some point or another where our quilt sort of gets wonky, right? And it tends to happen the more you quilt along. Um, and so if that happens to you, you might wanna try something like Thermor, which has a tendency to hold very straight, right? Another thing that Thermor is really nice for are art quilts. So if you ever do any art quilts where you have a lot of tiny piecing and stitching, you do not want a lot of loft, right? Because imagine each one of these is a stitch line, right? These are the, the puffed up area where the batting puffs up between the stitches. Well, if you have a lot of tiny details in your art quilt and then you put a lofty batting in there, you're gonna get a lot of puff and it may actually obscure your stitching or your piecing and all those little details. And that would be a shame when you've done all that work to then lose it in the quilting process. So always keep in mind that you want to think about what is that finish, right? What is the final look of that quilt and what's most important to me? What do I want to have showing, right? So we're going to go ahead and um, talk about, well, let me show you this as well. Um, so this is a sample uh, that we have made up with this batting. It's been washed a couple times. These are the samples we normally have in our booth. And you can see that it's got a nice drape, right? Nice finish, nice hand. Again, this has not been washed a lot and, and the battings get softer and softer the more you wash them, but it's still got a little bit of structure to it. You'll notice if I hold it up close that you can see the stitching quite well. 
And a lot of people are surprised by that. When they, when they see these in person, they tend to think because the batting is so thin and flat that you're not gonna see any definition in your stitching. And that's actually not the case. You will see a lot of definition in your stitching with this batting. This batting is also great for making minky quilts, right? So how many of you have ever used minky or cuddle, right? This really soft, cuddly stuff, especially popular with baby blankets or kids blankets because they like that soft, cuddly feel. Well, this is 100% polyester and it's not going to shrink. And this particular piece has a rose pattern right? And I want it to stay really nice. I want to be able to see the roses. Well, because this doesn't shrink, if I put a shrinking batting behind it and that batting shrinks, what happens is it's going to pull in on the fabric and it's going to give a puckered look and you may lose some of the definition in this design. So keep that in mind. Thermor is a wonderful batting for use with minky and cuddle. It won't shrink. It's going to keep it nice and flat. It's 100% polyester and it has a little bit of a tooth like a, it's not rough, but it has a little bit of a tooth to the surface so that when you lay the minky or the cuddle line, it doesn't slide around so much. So it makes it a little bit easier to quilt with. One little tip that I learned from someone who makes tons of quilts with minky and cuddle um, is that if you will take painter's tape and just tape the edges, you'll find that that'll keep it from fraying and making, you know, having that lint mess all over the place that you have to clean up or take off the quilt. So that's just a quick tip. One of the best um, uses for the thermore batting is to use it for t-shirt quilts and denim quilts, right? And remember earlier, I mentioned the fact that those are inherently very heavy quilts because they're made with cotton. So cotton is the heaviest fiber, whether you're talking about fabric or batting, it is the heaviest fiber of all the battings and, and fibers we use. So keep that in mind. If you make a very large t-shirt quilt, it's going to be heavy. Now you put a backing and thread and batting and suddenly that t-shirt quilt can be really unwieldy to move around. So if you're using it, you know, like as a comforter and it's really large, it may be too heavy to really move it around easily. So you may want to try using a very lightweight batting. The reason that a lot of people use the Thermor for t-shirt quilts is this. Number one, you can go nine inches apart in your stitches, right? So you can make a square around the t-shirt panel. A lot of people do not like for you to stitch through the t-shirt panel, but if you use a batting that requires stitching every four inches, you are going to have to stitch through that t-shirt panel to hold it securely in place. And that's even with it being stabilized, right? Because you're trying to hold the whole quilt together and you're trying to keep the batting in place as well. So being able to stitch nine inches would be a great thing for a t-shirt quilt. The other thing is that the t-shirts are generally already shrunk and your surface of your t-shirt quilt, generally people want that very smooth because they wanna see all the detail in each t-shirt. Well, if you put a shrinking batting behind those t-shirts that have already shrunk, you are gonna get puckering. You will not get any shrinking with the Thermor and that therefore that surface is gonna remain really flat and smooth and it's not going to be puckered up. You'll be able to see all the details, right? So great for that. For denim quilts, same type of thing. Um, and, and so those are just a few use cases. Um, it's also great for hand quilting. Now it was originally designed for clothing and miniatures. So you could use it in a, in a jacket like this one back here. Um, that one actually has silk in it, but it has thermor in the woven collar and that provides a little more structure. If you like to make thermor, uh, if you'd like to make thermor, sorry. <laughs> if you like to make uh, quilted jackets, uh, thermor can be a really good option. So is the silk and we'll talk a little bit more about silk for clothing when we get to that batting. Um, but just keep in mind that the thermal will have more structure. And again, it's gonna be a little warmer because of the fact that, that that polyester holds in the heat once there's body temperature there, okay? So we're gonna move on to two more battings. Uh, they are the next in line in terms of loft and they are the top and the third on your polyester section. And this first one is called poly down. And what you'll notice is this has got a lot more loft or thickness, right? More puff and it's super, super soft. This is one of my favorite battings for making kids or charity quilts. And that is because it's very soft, but very strong. 
and super cuddly. So this is a really nice batting for that. And again, this is called poly down. Now we have a similar batting to that. That is, that is in the heirloom line, the one I just showed you. This one is Tuscany poly and it is in the Tuscany line. Remember the two product lines I talked about at the beginning. And this Tuscany is actually even softer tiny bit less loft, but they're very, very similar, right? So great for the same thing. Great for a cuddly uh, throw for the couch. Great for a really warm bed comforter. Great for baby and kids, right? And because it's strong in polyester, you can throw it in the washing machine and wash and dry it. You can wash it on warm and you're not gonna have any problems. So it could be a really good uh, batting also for things like utility quilts, right? An everyday quilt, uh, an RV quilt, a picnic quilt, a quilt that you're gonna take to, to ball games, right? That's probably gonna get some staining and you're gonna need to wash it warmer to get that out of the fabric this batting will hold up really well. So you might wonder, well, why do you have two battings in the two different lines that are essentially the same? Well, here's why. Because the Tuscany line was actually created for independent quilt shops, okay? It's a little easier to merchandise in that uh, flat or rectangular square shape. Um, and it is also a batting that we don't sell to big box stores. So it was designed specifically to give the stores something unique and different to carry that would not be carried at a big box store. So a, a lot of the battings that we sell to independent quilt shops are the Tuscany battings. There is crossover in that we have 100% polyester, 100% cotton, 100% wool in both lines, but then we have unique products in each line as well. So we will talk about those as I go through them, um, but just keep in mind that that poly down and the Tuscany poly are very similar. Um, when I'm choosing one to use because I like that really soft feel, um, I like the Tuscany uh, more for like uh, adult quilts, everyday, you know, throw on the couch type of quilts. And if I'm doing anything for kids, then poly down is generally gonna be my go-to. Also, if you're doing any household projects, if you want to wrap a pillow form, you know, before you put your cover on there, if you are going to be recovering chairs, or you're going to recover the arms of the couch, you can use these polyester products. So you could use the poly down um, is what I'd recommend for that. And also this next one we're going to talk about. So this one is actually, you'll notice got a lot of structure to it, right? And it is our loftiest batting. It is actually called cloud loft and it is the thickest or puffiest loftiest batting that we make. Now, this is a very durable, kind of got a lot of sponge and stretch to it uh, type of batting. It's great for a lot of home decor project projects. Um, I just recovered some Ikea dining room chairs um, and I put a layer of this uh, between the fabric and the original cushion and that provides a little bit more cushion around and makes it look really nice where it wraps around the chair um, but also provides a little padding in those chairs as well. Now again I mentioned earlier that normally we would not recommend the polyester batting uh, in a hot humid climate. But this batting is one of the favorite battings for Hawaiian quilters, right? You might think, well, why on earth would they put that in there? Because it's gonna be a warm quilt. Well, they really like the loft or the puff they're able to get around those flowers. And that comes from this batting. So again, potential con, right? It may be worth the trade-off depending on what you're going for. So if you're really trying to have a really nice puffy quilt, you might be willing to trade the warmth right? Maybe that quilt's not going to be uh, used on a person. Maybe it's going to be hung up and displayed or laid on a bed um, and pulled down at night, right? Then it may not matter so much that you're using polyester. So that is it for the polyester section. Um, Heidi, if you have any questions, if you want to put them in the Zoom chat or, or break in and ask me, I'm happy to answer them. And otherwise, I'm going to go ahead and move on. So the next section is all about cottons. And normally when I, oh, looks like you might have a question. I, I was just gonna say, I think everything is going along very well, Stephanie, you keep going and um, they're enjoying it. Uh, we've just had some, um, some interesting, I'll say comments, but not any particular questions at the moment. Okay, perfect. Then I will go on to the next section. So we're gonna talk a little bit about cottons. And normally I interview the audience and I say, how many people like to use cotton batting? 
normally it's 80 to 90 percent of the audience right and that we expect that cotton batting was kind of the original batting that people used and it is a beautiful natural fiber cotton is very soft it's pliable it makes a really nice quilt it it does shrink three to five percent so it is going to give you that traditional quilt look right that traditional crinkly quilt look um, it's very cuddly it can be warm um, one thing to keep in mind is that it's got a lot of weight. So generally, if we take a king size bat of wool or polyester or silk and we compare it to a king size bat of cotton, there is no comparison, right? This one is going to be much, much heavier. That cotton is a very heavy fiber. And if you want a heavy quilt, that's great. But if you're going for warmth without weight or maybe whatever you're making for someone, you don't want it to weigh a lot. Maybe you're making a wall hanging. Maybe you're making something to hang up and you need to hang it easily and you don't want to have to worry about it being super heavy. Then cotton may not be the best choice. But again, cotton is a beautiful natural fiber. Now, one thing to keep in mind, the cotton that we're using, it is 100% natural cotton fiber. It's been cleaned. It's a really clean, soft, pretty fiber. It is also a little bit delicate in that when you bind the fiber, we do something that's called needle punching. So what we're doing is we're using these boards that are about this wide, about as tall as I am, and they have hundreds to thousands of very long, very sharp needles. And they actually punch the fiber like this, like if you were doing uh, wool felting. If you've ever done wool felting with roving and a block and a real sharp needle, that's the same concept that we use for batting. So if you see the term needle punched cotton uh, or needle punched any kind of fiber, that's what that means is that we've used needles to bind the fibers together. But think about a cotton ball, right? If you, sorry. Usually I turn that off. <laughs> um, if you are taking a cotton ball and you start to pull it, right, what happens? You'll stretch it out of shape. And if you keep pulling on it, eventually you can actually uh, completely pull it apart. Well, batting kind of works the same way. Now it's not so easy to pull it apart, um, but if any of you have ever loaded a big roll of cotton onto a long arm machine and you've really pulled it on the edges, you may have found that it's stretched out a little bit, right? So let me show you an example. So this is normal cotton batting, right? Now our cotton battings are fairly thin. This is what our customer base likes. It's what we've always been known for. And it is very, again, very soft, beautiful fiber. This is our heirloom natural cotton. It's 100% cotton, no other fiber blended into it, no scrim layer. And I will talk a little bit about scrim in case anybody doesn't know what that is. Um, but the thing you need to keep in mind is, right, you've got a really nice straight edge here. But if you start to really pull on your batting, right, you start to really pull it to get it on the long arm machine, and you keep pulling, what happens, right? You start to get it stretched out of shape and it can start to be curvy. That may not matter so much at the beginning of quilting, but as you quilt through the quilt, you may find that that gets you out of sorts, right? You, your quilt may stay not stay so squared up. So just remember that when you're handling 100% cotton, this doesn't just apply to Hobbs batting. This is any 100% cotton that does not have other fibers blended into it, right? Think of it like a cotton ball. Just be gentle when you're loading it on a long arm and when you're manipulating it and putting your quilt sandwich together, just be careful with it. Now again, cotton fiber is wonderful. It's gonna give you a traditional look. It's great for just about any kind of quilt, right? Great for everyday quilts, bedspreads, et cetera. Here's a couple things to know about it though. Number one, because the cotton has already been needle punched, right? And this is how batting is made and not just our batting. You use needle punching to bind fibers together. Well, that needle punching, the more you do it, the flatter and stiffer the cotton fiber gets. So now if you're gonna make a quilt and you are gonna very heavily stitch it, keep in mind that that could potentially make the quilt stiff. 
And normally I ask the question, how many of you have ever made a big quilt? You stitch the daylights out of it. And when you go to pick it up, you could pretty much stand it up, right? It's stiff as a board. That's from that, that heavy needle punching and then the heavy stitching that you've done. And again, that can make that very stiff. If you're using cotton thread, right? You're basically putting all of that kind of stiff thread because compared to the fabric, it is stiff into place. And if you have a ton of stitching, you could potentially end up with a very stiff quilt. So there are other battings that we might recommend when you're going to very heavily stitch something. The other time we do not recommend 100% cotton batting is for show quilts. So we haven't talked a lot about show quilts, but I will be talking more and more about those. If you are submitting a quilt for show to be judged, we do not recommend using cotton, 100% cotton. And the reason being that cotton likes to hold creases, right? If you have a favorite pair of jeans, if you've ever, maybe when you're a kid, had a pair of jeans and they got, you know, ironed, once that crease is in there, it's real hard to get it out, right? And so we always try to make sure people understand that if you're going to make a show quilt, you're going to fold it up, you're going to send it off, right? And it may sit for a month or two, all folded up, creased. And then it's going to be taken out, it's going to be judged, and it's going to be folded back up, and it's going to be waiting until it's hung in the show. Uh, hopefully, right? Hopefully you, you get a good uh, position in the show and you're going to have it displayed. Now, during all that time, which could be three to six months, maybe longer, that quilt is folded, right? And it is creasing. And once it gets hung, you are going to see all of those creases. Let me show you an example of that. So remember I talked earlier about the wash test samples that we make when we're developing batting. This is a wash test sample. And what you'll notice about this is those deep creases, okay? This sample sits folded up just like this. I vary the way it's folded every time I fold it up, but it sits folded all the time. It's not heavily creased, right? But those creases grab a hold of that cotton and they don't wanna let go. So just keep that in mind. That's the reason we have other battings that we recommend for show quilts and we don't recommend 100% cotton. Now, that's not to say you can't use 100% cotton in conjunction with something else. There is something called double batting where you layer two different types of batting or maybe two of the same batting to get different effects or weights or strengths, uh, warmth versus not warm um, in a quilt. And I'll talk more about double batting, um, but I do wanna bring that up now because you can use cotton as the second layer, meaning that it is the bottom layer. So you have your backing, your cotton, another batting, and then your top. Um, and that's one way to keep from getting the heavy creases showing on the front of your quilt. Now, keep in mind with a show quilt, they are judging the front and the back of your quilt. So we're gonna go back to our little sample. You'll notice this has got this white binding or cream color binding all the way around. Now, I learned this from a quilt judge, and that is when judges are looking at a quilt, they are actually going to take their hand and they're gonna run it all the way around the binding on your quilt. So they're gonna go all the way around and what they're feeling for is to make sure that your binding is completely full of batting, right? That it has got batting and fabric in there and that there's no spots in here that have no batting, right? That are maybe flat um, or don't feel puffy and full like the rest of the quilt. That's important because again, if you were to stretch your batting out and get it kind of wonky, by the time you're all done quilting and you get to the end of your quilt, you may be short batting on some of the sides or on the end or on the top, wherever it might be, right? Generally, it's going to be at the end or on the sides. Um, and so that could be problematic because now you're going to put your binding on there and it's not going to be full. So it could look odd where you're short on batting. Also keep in mind, um, and I know that Heidi offers long arm services. Keep in mind that when you generally, when you take a quilt in to be quilted by somebody else, they are going to want at least four inches of extra batting around all four sides. So if your quilt were 80 by 80, you would want to make your batting by big enough batting to have it be 88 by 88, which gives you four inches top, four inches on in the bottom, four inches left and right. Right, so just keep that in mind. You always want to have some extra batting because the batting pulls in as the quilting happens, and you don't want to run short of batting. It's not great when a long armor has to stop and piece batting 
uh, because they didn't have enough batting to start with. Now, generally, when you go to long armors who do it all day, every day, they have their own batting. I'm sure Heidi recommends batting, maybe sells it as part of the service. Um, but just keep that in mind. If you're shipping a quilt off and you want your own batting, you want to send batting, make sure it's big enough because we have a lot of times people come and buy, want to buy a queen size bat. We always ask what size is a quilt. And if they say it's a queen, we'll generally recommend they buy a king size bat so that we're sure they're going to have enough batting all the way, excuse me, all the way around and again to fill the, the uh, binding. So we looked at the natural cotton. That was that first sample that I held up for you. We also make a white version, right? Very, very white version of that. It is made with a bleached cotton, right? Now, one of the great benefits of the bleached cotton is that there is a little bit of shrinkage that happens when the cotton is bleached. It's the same exact cotton, it's just bleached, um, still very soft, very natural, um, still does everything that the natural cotton does. The difference is that this white color will really keep your white fabrics, like this banner behind me, and your lighter fabrics really nice and bright, right? So if you have really white fabric, if you have pastel color fabrics, using a bleach batting can be quite nice. And again, one of the benefits is that that cotton may have already been shrunk a little bit during the bleaching process. So you may find that you have less shrinkage. Now, another batting we're gonna talk about is called Heirloom Natural with Scrim. If you look on your sheet, it is in a purple bar about two thirds of the way down. Um, and it is the same exact cotton that I showed you. The difference is that this has a scrim layer on one side of the batting. So this is a good time to tell you because we get this question at every single lecture. Is there a right and a wrong side to batting? And what side's the right side and what side's the wrong side? Um, oftentimes people will say, well, it's the bumpy side, that's the right side. Okay, our batting should be smooth on both sides and it should be identical on both sides. There should be no bumpy or pitted part. If you see that, we might have a problem. You should reach out to us so we can make sure that your batting's okay, right? We make all of our own batting. We're not perfect, but we make our own batting and we do stand behind it. Once in a while, we make a mistake and then we just replace the batting. We never hassle anybody. So I just want you to know that, that if you ever get a batting and you think, oh, I've used this 80-20 forever, I've used this cotton forever, and it doesn't quite look the same, just reach out to us. Don't put it in your quilt, just reach out to us. We're gonna ask you for a sample of it and the bag and the, the production information on the bag so that we can find out if there's an issue. Um, and if there is, we're just gonna replace it for you. No big deal, we'll send it out overnight to you. Uh, we don't wanna hold you up. But I want to bring that up because we get that question a lot. And for Hobbs batting, there is no right or wrong side. Both sides are identical. The only exception to that is this heirloom natural with scrim. The scrim is only on one side. And like we talked about earlier, it is needle punched into the cotton, right? So we have a layer of cotton, the scrim layer, and then the needles punch it into the cotton to get it embedded in the fiber. Now I've pulled the two pieces apart. It's not easy to do. So don't worry that when you get this, it's gonna peel apart because it doesn't, you have to really pull on it. But this is the cotton batting. This is the scrim, right? And they're, and they're put together via needle punching. And I wanna show you the scrim up close, just so you can see that this is very thin, right? It's like a stabilizer or an interfacing. And it is very thin and very soft, but also incredibly strong. Now with that natural cotton that I held up earlier, I pulled and pulled and pulled, right? And it gets stretched out of shape. Well, this product, you can pull and pull and pull and nothing happens. It does not distort. And that's because that scrim acts like a web and it holds that cotton in place and keep it, keeps it from stretching out. This is one of my favorite products. And I think the, the one that people know the least about, um, there's been a lot of misinformation where people talk about scrim and say, oh, it's not good to have scrim in a quilt. It makes it stiff. It's not true at all. That scrim, actually, you, when I hand somebody a sample of the product, generally they cannot tell where the cotton is and where the scrim is. 
They blend together very beautifully. It makes it really soft. Now, here's one of the biggest benefits of using this product. If you look at your chart, you'll notice that the stitch width on this is eight inches. So that means you can stitch up to eight inches apart. That gives you additional design options. It means that you can make all sorts of different designs. You don't have to stitch so tight together. Um, and that that batting is gonna be very strong and hold up well. This is great for kids quilts, right? The, the quilts they're gonna make forts with and put their brother or sister on, drag them around the living room. It is a really great batting for that because it's strong and it'll hold up to that could be good for things like RV quilts, beach quilts, picnic quilts, um, a quilt you take to the stadium, right? Something to keep you warm. Um, but it's also wonderful for things like whole cloth quilts, right? With a whole cloth quilt, you are basically, your only thing you're showing off is your stitching. And if you double this batting up, the stitching definition is amazing. There's some really well-known quilters who've won really big prizes using two layers of this batting inside a whole cloth quilt. The other nice thing, if you're ever making a quilt that has maybe a scalloped or curved edge, right? And you want it to stay really symmetrical, this is a really good batting because it's gonna stay really straight. It's not gonna get all wonky out, stretched out of shape as you go through, especially if you're really manipulating it a lot, like you would when you're doing a whole cloth quilt, you're manipulating the quilt a lot during all that stitching. Now, Keep in mind, I remember earlier I mentioned that with cotton, that's a heavy fiber. You also have to take into account the weight of your thread. So if you think about big cones of thread, right? If you very heavily stitch a quilt, you might go through a few cones of thread. Hold those cones in your hand. Think about that weight. That weight is now in your quilt. So again, always be thinking about weight and warmth and you know, kind of balancing the things. Make a list of what you're going for in your quilt and prioritize it, right? And then choose your batting by your top priorities. Now, the last all cotton we're gonna talk about is a newer product. It's actually not on your sheet. So I'm gonna give you the name so you can write it on that sheet or write it down in your notes. It is called Tuscany Supreme Cotton, okay? This is the cotton. It is the exact same cotton that we talked about earlier, same exact fiber that we use, but there's a whole lot more of it. It's a much, thicker, softer, loftier cotton. So how is it softer? Well, number one, we don't needle punch it as heavy, right? That needle punching flattens and stiffens. This uh, batting is actually quite challenging to make because you have to stitch it or, or needle punch it enough so that the fibers hold together, but not so much that you flatten and stiffen it. The goal of this batting was to give a thicker, fluffier, softer cotton for people who wanted that. We had a lot of requests for that. And so we now have that product available. Now, one of the great things about this batting, and I showed you a little wash test sample earlier, is that you can get a lot of definition with very little stitching, right? And here we have an open spot. Now, the reason that you've got places that are stitched and places that aren't is this was a wash test sample. So when we were trying to determine how far apart do we need to stitch on this to hold it in place, this was one of the samples we used. Another sample that we used is this one here. And let me see if I can get that up close. What you'll notice about this is that it is actually very heavily stitched in the middle, right? Lots of pebbling. Now with normal cotton batting, that would be stiff as a board. When I held this up, the middle part of this sample would be just stiff and you wouldn't be able to flex it. This is completely flexible, right? Soft, it's not stiff at all. And that is because it is that thick cotton and not heavily needle punched. So keep that in mind. If you want to have a cotton and you wanna be able to do a lot of stitching on it and have it not get stiff, maybe you're making a baby quilt, this could be a good choice. Now. This batting is one of the battings that you absolutely should be washing cold water, delicate cycle without heavy agitation or spin, and it actually should be air dried or dried in a cool air fluff only dryer because it will shrink a little more than the other cottons because it's got more cotton and there's less needle punching. Now, if you very heavily stitch your quilt, you'll find that it won't shrink up as much, right? Because your stitching is kind of holding that fiber in place, but it is gonna give you a beautiful traditional finish. If you're ever refurbishing a vintage quilt, 
that is the best batting to use. It is gonna make it feel like the old traditional grandma's quilt that everybody fought over and wanted to get under, right? It's a really beautiful batting. Um, and again, it'll give you beautiful definition to your piecing and your stitching, give you a really soft finish. Uh, just remember creases, right? So if you're making a show quilt and you're gonna use that batting, we would recommend putting another batting on top of it. And I will talk about some of those. So Heidi, do we have any questions that we need to address? Anything about the cotton battings before I go on? We are doing good, Stephanie. Everybody is enjoying it. We have a little bit smaller group because of our technical issues. Um, so we'll certainly be able to um, uh, post this, the recording of this. And if we have additional comments, come back to you. But uh, lots okay. of good information. One of the things that uh, perked my ears, I will say is, I thought there always was a right and wrong side um, to batting. And so um, very interesting that um, as you described that uh, there is not, except for the scrim. Right, right. And, and I will say that that may not apply to other brands, right? That is our brand. That's how we make batting. Um, but there may be other brands that, and they, generally they will tell you on the packaging, right? That information is on the packaging, will tell you, to, you know, to place this side up or this side down. And with that natural with scrim, even though it's only on one side, you can choose whether to put it up or down. That's a personal preference. I will tell you about 98% of long armors, especially put it facing down. So if, you, if you're kind of curious, if I use that product, should I have it facing down? Yes, you should have it facing down. So we're gonna move on to our blends. And again, in the very beginning, I mentioned our Heirloom 8020. Number one selling product for us. Um, we still sell 10, 10 truckloads of that to every other product. And it's a wonderful um, all around batting. It can be used in any kind of a quilt, right? It, it's 80% cotton, 20% polyester. And I will show you that it's going to look similar to the cotton that we had, but it's got a little more loft because of the polyester that's in it. And it's a little bit more uh, stronger, right? It's got a little more stretch and give. Um, and that's bec again, because we blended the cotton and the polyester. So we're using loose products and blending them together. So with the natural with scrim, you've got a layer of cotton and a layer of scrim. With this product, you've got both fibers blended left to right, front to back, all the way across, up and down in the batting. So it's throughout that it's 80-20 cotton and poly. It is a wonderful batting for pretty much any kind of quilt. And it is the batting that we recommend for charity quilts. We do have a charity batting program and it is one of the two battings that we offer through that program. Now, that's a natural version of it. We also have a bleached version, right? So just like the bleached cotton we talked about earlier, same thing. This is the polyester, which is white, blended with the bleached batting, which is also white. So if you're making uh, quilts out of white or light fabrics, that could be a really good choice for you. We also make that batting in black. And a lot of people didn't know that black batting was available. So what do you use black batting for? Well, it's first of all, great for quilts made with black fabrics, but also dark brown, dark blue, purple, dark green, red. Even like the quilted jacket behind me, that's made with hand dyed fabric. And then even the uh, fabric strips here, the K-Facet fabric strips, um, it's really good for that as well. It's not gonna darken it, but the really nice thing is, you know how when you finish a whole quilt and it's made with dark fabrics, what do you have to do? got to get your lint roller out, right? And you got to roll all that light lint off your dark fabrics. Well, you're never going to have to do that with black batting because the black batting actually will really look uh, nice in the quilt, number one, keep your darks dark, um, but it's not going to put that light lint all over your fabric. So that's one less step you have to do in the quilt making process. Um, and I just love the black batting and I know Heidi just brought that in. So if any of you wanting to try that, if you're making uh, dark quilts, um, keep that in mind. Another thing I wanna talk about, let me just grab this sample back here. Remember earlier when I talked about double batting and I talked about modern quilts. So we see a lot of modern quilts that might have a lot of light fabrics in the front, white or light fabrics in the front, right? And they might have a lot of black or dark fabrics in the back why not take these two battings and pair them, 
So you can use the light batting facing your light fabrics, the dark batting facing your dark fabrics, layer the two battings and make your quilt. And then you get the benefit of each batting on each side of the quilt. So that's another reason that you might want to double bat, right? Is that it gives you an opportunity to, to affect the front and the back of your quilt differently. Then we have an 80-20 fusible. Okay, so I'm gonna show you when I pull this one apart, this is normal, that it will stick to itself. This is that same 80-20 blend batting, but we have sprayed a fusing medium on the top and bottom. So if you're used to spray basting your quilt sandwich together, hopefully this will be life-changing because you no longer have to do that. You lay down your back, you lay down your fusible batting, you lay down your top, you press from the top and it adheres all three layers at once. So it's a great time saver and it will stay together. So let me show you some examples. So this is just a strip of the batting, right? And I want to be able to put that onto my fabric. So I'm gonna lay my, that's my top, this is my back. I'm gonna lay my backing fabric and then my batting on top of that, and then I'm gonna put my top fabric. This is three layers of batting, or three layers, right? That's your sandwich. It's got the batting in the middle, <coughs> excuse me, and there is nothing holding this together other than that fusible batting, right? So it holds together beautifully. Now this has been together for about six months. I open and close this, you know, at every lecture two to five times a week. Um, and it's held together beautifully. Now, let's say that you are maybe doing applique pieces, or maybe you only want to fuse it on one side, right? Batting fabric. All you're going to need to do so that this doesn't stick to your ironing surface and so that it remains fusible is just take one of these like parchment sheets, lay it down. So you're going to lay that down, you're going to lay your batting and your fabric on top, and you're going to press it from the top right? And the key thing here is very hot iron, dry iron. You don't want any steam. Okay, and I'll tell you why in just a second. And you want to be pressing, not ironing. So you don't want to be moving the iron around. You need a lot of heat to set this. So you want to keep it pressed, right? Press in each place three to five seconds. Couple things that I find work really well. Number one, if you're doing small things or um, let's say you're doing uh, applique or you're doing uh, using strips like jelly roll strips, uh, these little mini Aliso irons, fantastic. This is my favorite iron. I actually demo with this. I love this iron um, and it gets really hot and it does a beautiful job of fusing this batting. That doesn't mean you need to go buy a new iron. I just want to say that if you're in the market for an iron, that iron is amazing. And I know Heidi does carry these. Um, it is my favorite brand of iron, um, but there are many irons. I also have a Rowenta um, that works well as well. Also the wool pressing mats, right? These wool pressing mats, um, you know, we don't sell these things, but I do a lot of demos. And so I know what things work and what things I like to use. That pressing mat is wonderful because it kind of locks that heat in place and it will help to fuse your three layers. Now, we have a lot of people who like to use this for making things like jelly roll rugs or bags or purses or straps or sashing. So if you're gonna be doing something like that, there's actually a newer product out and this is that same fusible 80-20, but it comes in strips, okay? These are two and a quarter inches wide and we made them that width because your fabric is two and a half and you want a little bit of a space. So this is your fabric and there's the batting strip. And again, this has been sitting, you know, fused together. Um, if you're doing applique, you can fuse your batting and your fabric together, just one side, and then feed that through your AccuQuilt machine or use your templates to cut it out by hand or however you're going to do it. Maybe you have a ruler that, that has shapes on it um, and you can actually cut those shapes out. Now you set them batting side down, wherever you're going to be applying them, you press them in place, and then you can go and do your hand stitching. So if you like to do quilt as you go, if you're taking an applique project with you, this is a great way to put the pieces in place where you want them, and they'll hold in place until you're ready to stitch them. Again, key things are that you wanna have a lot of heat, you want it to be dry, and here's why. 
that water, that fusing medium is water soluble. That means that it actually washes out in the wash. So that's important for two reasons. Number one, it's going to leave behind really soft 80-20 batting. Just the fusing medium washes away and it's going to be very soft. Also, you don't want to use any water um, because if let's say that you spray, right, while you're ironing um, and you get that wet, that fusing medium is actually going to start to disappear, right? So that's important to know. The other reason we want you to know it's water soluble is you need to make sure that your stitching is what's holding your quilt together. Because what happens a lot of times is people won't read the instructions, they'll use the fusible, and they'll just do a little bit of, you know, stitching around the edges. Well, the middle of your quilt has to be held together by stitches or when you wash it, and the fusing medium washes out, suddenly things aren't attached in the middle anymore. So very important to know that. Now I will tell you with all of our battings, if you take them out of the packaging and they have creases or wrinkles, you can actually take one of these little spray bottles, you can lightly mist the batting. And I mean lightly, Your, the batting should not be wet, not even really damp, just barely, barely spritzed with water. Or you can dampen a washcloth, squeeze it out and throw that in the dryer. You throw the batting, that, that misted batting or the batting with a damp washcloth in a dryer on, on cool air fluff, no heat for 10, 15 minutes, it'll take all the wrinkles out and then your batting will be smooth and ready to go. The only one you cannot do that with is this fusible batting. And again, that's because if you do get it wet, it's no longer going to stick for you, but it is great for lots of different things. So here's a little example. This was a little Easter basket that was made with those strips um, and it's just the batting and fabric. There's no foam in here. So if you're making like pop-up baskets and things and you've been buying, having to buy foam and, and things to put in it to give it structure, you won't need to do that with this batting. Now, once you wash this, this will loosen up a little bit right? It's not going to be quite as stiff as it is right now because the fusing medium is going to wash out. But these are very narrow strips with a lot of stitching. So it's not going to change the character of this too much. But again, straps, jelly roll rugs, pop-up bins, um, even sashing and quilting as you go projects, that fusible batting is beautiful for that. There's a lot of well-known quilters that use it. Um, Mr. Domestic online, uh, Angela Walters, um, and we've got more that are starting to use it now. So if you have any questions about that, please go to our website. There's a whole page on that. Um, and all of the packages always have information on how to use it. For best results, you do need to follow those directions. All right, we have one more 8020. This one is in the Tuscany line and it is called Tuscany Cotton Wool, okay? You'll notice this looks a little puffier, right? It's 80% cotton, but the 20% is wool rather than poly, super soft. Next to that supreme cotton, this is our second softest batting, and this gets softer every time the quilt is washed. This is a beautiful batting for a throw, uh, for a bed quilt, for uh, a blanket or quilt to have on the couch really nice for that as well. Um, and it is going to be very soft and get softer every time you wash it. So it's also one of the battings that has a certain texture before it's washed and then it then it changes a little bit, gets even softer as you wash the quilt. Again, no pre-washing the batting. So this is once it's inside a quilt or quilted project. Now this is a batting that's gonna shrink three to 5%. It's gonna give you that crinkled look. Um, and it is wonderful as a second bat. So if you're making a show quilt, this is one of the most popular second bats. So you have a backing, cotton wool, usually wool, and then another fabric on top. And the reason people use the cotton wool in the back is because it will really make your piece, your uh, stitching stand out, right? Generally the back of your quilt only has stitching and you really want that to look beautiful because that's also judged. Um, but even if you're making an everyday quilt, you can pair two battings and get a really nice cuddly quilt or excuse me, a quilt with a different finish top and bottom. So this can be a really good one for that. So think about the cotton wool as a, um, a everyday quilt, a bedspread. Um, we do have some people that use it in kids quilts, but here's something to know. It has 20% wool in it and that wool is 100% wool. If you apply really hot 
uh, temperatures to it, whether that's uh, hot water in a washing machine, hot dryer, or steam with a, a hot iron, you can actually felt the wool, right? And that's that goes for any kind of wool that you're buying, uh, any kind of wool batting. If you put high heat and steam, you can felt the wool right through the fabric, and then you could have a lot of problems. First of all, you know what it's like, right? If you were to take a really nice wool sweater and throw it in a warm washer, what happens? It comes out real stiff as a board and probably the size of Barbie clothes, right? So it's gonna shrink a lot. And that same thing could happen with anything that's made with the cotton wool or the next batting we're gonna talk about, which is 100% wool. Two battings left, thanks for hanging in there. Remember, we have a really fun surprise at the end, so hang in there with us. So the next batting we're gonna talk about is 100% wool, right? This is it here, very soft, wonderful hand. This is a beautiful batting for hand quilting. It's one of our top two for hand quilting. Um, it is wonderful for show quilts. The primary reason that people use it for show quilts is that it has no memory for creases. So if you're ever making a quilt that is either going to go to a show or maybe it's a holiday quilt and it's going to be folded up most of the year and you want to bring it out once a year and not have to do a ton of work to get the creases out of it, this can be a really good choice. A couple things to note about wool. First of all, this is super washed wool. This is the most expensive wool that you can buy. It's the only wool that we will buy to make our batting because we want it to be super soft. So if you're thinking about kind of scratchy wool sweater versus merino wool, right? The, the difference in the feel and the texture of that, this is merino wool, right? This is soft like that. It's got a really smooth, soft texture, nice hand, amazing loft and definition to your piecing and your stitching. Another reason it's favored by show quilters, we've won in a lot of shows with really big expensive quilts people put a lot of time and money into, they've won big money prizes and often it's with this wool batting. It is antimicrobial, it wicks moisture so it dries very quickly. It is one of the battings that we do recommend or very strongly recommend cold water, delicate cycle, no heavy agitation or spin, air drying is best definitely do not dry clean anything made with this batting. And that is because at a dry cleaner, even if it's a natural dry cleaner that's not using a lot of chemicals, they generally tend to still use a lot of heat and steam. And if they really heavily steam press this, again, they could felt it right through the fabric and then you may have all sorts of problems down the road because the batting is really not batting anymore. Now it's felted wool and it's not gonna feel good and it's not gonna perform well. So keep that in mind. Um, again, wonderful for hand quilting. Great for wall quilts, great for um, holiday hangings, those types of things. Um, just keep in mind, it's very, very lightweight. Now, this is also one of those battings that we use a ton of here in Texas because it's great when you need warmth in the winter, but it can be used year round. That, that natural fiber breathes and it's not gonna be too hot in the summer. And now generally in the South, when I tell people to use wool, they look at me like I'm totally nuts. But you have to think of it like this. If you were to go hiking in Costa Rica where it's hot and humid and damp all the time, and you went to REI and said, I need to have some really good hiking socks for Costa Rica. It's gonna be uh, really hot and humid and damp. They don't sell you cotton socks, they sell you wool socks. And that's because wool's antimicrobial and it wicks moisture and your feet are going to get drier quicker and you're not gonna have any problems from the wool. So just keep that in mind that it's great for that. Now we do make clothing insulation from the same type of wool and people really love it for clothing as well. It is gonna add a little bit of loft, right? Now I have enough of my own puff. So when I make clothes, I don't wanna add puff. I would use something like the next product, which is silk, because that is gonna be thin, it's gonna provide beautiful definition and it drapes beautifully. So the silk is the last batting we're gonna talk about. It's very thin, right, but strong. It's got 90% silk, 10% poly. The 10% poly is just there for strength. And this one is one of those real surprising kind of battings. Again, if you felt this and you had no idea what it was, you would never buy this to put in anything but it is the most beautiful batting and it provides the most beautiful drape of anything we make. So this is more like Dupiani silk. So if you're thinking silk like silky jammies, no, 
not like that, it's not like silky sheets. It's like Dupiani silk. It's gonna have a little rougher texture, a little stiffer, but it one time washing it and it is drapey. This is a sample that's been washed one time. And this is just the most beautiful drape. The other thing about anything made with the silk batting is when you feel the sample, it is going to be cool to the touch. It always feels cool to the touch. That's a characteristic of that silk fiber. So the silk in the poly blend is very strong. It's antimicrobial, beautiful for hand quilting. It's my number one recommendation for hand quilting. But if you want a puffier finish, then the wool would be the second, thermal would be the third. Um, so if you're a hand quilter, you do any kind of hand applique kind of work, these are beautiful battings for that. The silk is also great for art quilts and wall hangings, just like the Thermor. Um, it's actually my favorite for art quilts. It's beautiful for clothing. It's in that jacket behind me. And that jacket actually still has a lot of structure, but again, it hasn't been washed. That's a couture or a like a fashion design piece that somebody created um, and it has got a lot of body to it. Now, if we wash that once, it would completely change the characteristic of it. So if you like to make quilted jackets and you wanna be able to wear it year round, this is absolutely the batting I would recommend for that. Um, again, cold water delicate cycle, no heavy agitation or spin definitely air dry the quilt. And again, it is going to dry very quickly. The batting uh, wicks moisture and it dries very quickly. Your cotton fabric will take longer to dry than your batting does. So we've gotten through all the fibers and we're gonna take a quick break. And then I just have a couple closing notes. I just wanna find out from Heidi if we have any questions I need to address. Yes, Stephanie. First of all, people are saying thank you um, that this is just great information. Um, they're, you know, they're going to rewatch it when we reload it because there, there is so much information. You've gone over so much detail. Mm -hmm. One of the questions is that you mentioned um, information about batting for charity quilts, um, a pro, a specific program. Is that on the website? is and actually the easiest way to find it is just go into google and type in hobbs charity batting and then it'll pop up to the page on our website and there's two battings Perfect. that are available one is the heirloom 8020 and the other is a polyester that we sell by the yard go and type in hobbs Perfect. Charity batting. okay and we'll make sure that she gets answered on that um, that is wonderful. Um, I think that is one of the, again, people are just saying great information, great information. They're loving it. Um, and so I think at the moment that is our, um, our one question for right now. Okay. So I just have a couple um, things that I think are really important to, to address. Um, one of those is that whether you're using our batting or someone else's, the goal here was really to expose you to the fibers, for you to understand how the fibers perform, um, again, the pros and cons of those, how they're going to affect the outcome of the quilt. And there's no, you know, the best batting, the worst batting, right, within a line or between lines. They're all a little bit different. We all make our batting a little bit different. And really, my goal is I want you to understand the fibers so that no matter what batting you're picking, that you will be happy with what you pick. I know this is a lot of information, right? I mean, it's, I've been with Hobbs for five years and I constantly learn new things, add new things to this lecture. A lot of it comes from talking to professional quilters, to long armors, to my team who also are, uh, you know, 25, 30, 40 year quilters. Um, and we're always learning new things. Sometimes customers reach out to us with a problem and we problem solve with them. And when we learn from that, then we add that to the lecture. So I'm glad that this is recorded. You have an opportunity to go back and listen to it. Every page of our website has tremendous information. And again, Heidi, you're welcome to share my contact information and you're welcome to reach out to me to ask questions anytime. I'm happy to help you. I'm in the central time zone as well. Um, so just keep that in mind if you do call. I do want to close with two things. One is um, that we need to talk a little bit about bearding because this question comes up a lot and you need to understand what does and does not cause bearding and how to avoid it. So number one, start with the very best quality fabric you can buy. If you can um, buy quilt shop level quality fabric, right, 10, 12, 15 or more per yard, you should not have any issues with bearding. 
the fabric quality absolutely is critical because if you're buying a really inexpensive fabric that when you hold up the weave, it looks like this, right? And you can see light through it. It doesn't matter what batting you put behind it. Chances are the batting's gonna come up through the weave of the fabric. So you wanna start with really good fabrics. And I know Heidi carries a lot of those. Secondly, um, you always wanna make sure that you're starting every project with a new needle. And I get a lot of pushback on this, believe it or not. I always ask, you know, how many people put a brand new needle? And it's never more than like 10% of the audience. So here's the thing. The needle is a critical component of making your quilt. It is the least expensive element of your quilt, right? It's a couple of dollars. And it can absolutely make or break the finish of your quilt and your enjoyment of quilting, right? You use the wrong needle or use an old needle or a dull needle, you can have breakage, skip stitches, all sorts of things. So those two things are really critical. Now, let's say that you've started with a new needle and you've started with great fabric and you start to quilt along and you're experiencing bearding. And for anybody who doesn't know what bearding is, it's when you have tufts of batting coming through the stitch holes in the fabric, right, in your quilt. When you see that, do not continue and think, oh, well, I'll just stitch it. And when I'm all done, I'll throw it in the wash and it'll stop. No, actually, when you wash that quilt, that bearding's going to get a whole lot worse because it'll, and it'll continue to beard every time you wash it. So if you have bearding, immediately stop, take your needle out, put a brand new needle in. I know you already started with a new needle, put a new needle in. It may be that the needle you put in has a little burr on it. It may not be super sharp, whatever the case may be start again with a new needle and start to stitch again. If you see bearding still, stop again, take your needle out, go down one size in your needle. It may be that the thread fabric batting pairing with that needle is not working. It's making too big of a hole and it's allowing the batting to come be pulled up through the fabric at every stitch. So you've now gone down a size in needle, you start to stitch again. If you still have bearding issues, stop again, and check the tension on your machine. Because if the tension is too tight, it's pulling against the, the weave, right? You've got a warp and a weft of your fabric, right? And it's pulling against that. And again, it can create gaps that allow the needle to pull the batting up through as you're stitching. Also the speed at which you're stitching, right? That can also affect that. But generally it's gonna be one of the first two issues, new needle, smaller size needle, sometimes tension. If you've tried all those things and you're still having problems, call us, right? Um, I will tell you that oftentimes people call their quilty friends first and get advice. And I think that's great, right? Because all of our friends have great advice. A lot of us have been through things and they can provide advice. When it comes to issues around bearding, when it comes to anything to do with batting, reach out to the manufacturer first because we know what does and doesn't work and we can save you some grief. Sometimes people get bad advice and they actually make the situation worse. And sometimes whatever they do, um, whether it's bleeding fabric or whatever it might be, um, had they called us first, we could fix it. And now they did something else and now it's no longer repairable. So just keep that in mind that, you know, we're always here to help you. Um, I'm sure Heidi and her team can provide lots of valuable information as well. Um, but just, just know that we're available as a resource. That is my alarm to tell me to stop. <laughs> so I hope everybody learned a lot. Um, I know that Heidi has a great selection. I went out and surfed her website yesterday and um, I wanna mention a couple things. I know she carries the Aliso irons, the wool mats. Highly recommend both of those. Batting tape. She also carries a batting tape for connecting batting, which you can lay on your, like these are your two pieces of batting. You lay it in the middle and you can iron it in place. Also know that you don't have to use tape, but you can, but you can also just put clean edges next to each other, set your stitch width on six and zigzag across. As long as it's catching both sides of the batting, that batting will hold together just beautifully. But when you pair batting, right, we call it Franken batting. When you put battings together, put like battings together. Don't put a piece of cotton and a piece of poly together because they have different shrink rates and they're gonna behave differently and your quilt's gonna look really goofy when you get it out of the wash. 
Now, if you're making an art quilt, that may be what you want, right? You might want a real flat spot and a real puffy spot, and that's great. But for normal piecing of batting, make sure it has the same shrink rate and that it's the same type of batting, right? Now, you could put a natural and a bleach cotton together. That would be fine. Um, but just remember that they may affect the fabric look a little bit differently. Um, and we have a little special treat. So I know Heidi has a code to share with you, but we have a special thing that we're going to do. I know that Iowa has a shop hop coming up. And you know those samples that I showed you, they are 18 inch square samples. We have a set of those that comes with the sheet on the front, that, that information grid on the front, and it's one of every batting that we make. Um, and we are going to send a case of those up to Heidi. The first 10 people who come into her shop on the first day of the shop hop and make a purchase of batting are going to get one of those sample sets for free. So it gives you a chance to try all the different battings, to make your own little samples, to stitch them heavily, stitch them lightly, bind them, throw them in the washing machine, and now you'll know exactly how the batting is going to perform in your fabrics and for your projects. We love that, Stephanie. Thank you so much for that generous offer and excited. June 1st is going to be here before we know it. And I can only imagine that we'll have uh, have people requesting that batting, those batting samples immediately. And our, our offer for everybody listening today is free shipping. You have to use coupon code, the words free shipping, capital F, capital S, no space in between those two words free shipping, and you will get free shipping on your order today. The only restriction is that when you um, buy batting by the yard, um, it is a piece that is three yards or less. If it's more than three yards, then uh, we have to call and talk about, about the shipping options um, or whether pick up in store. But um, otherwise, and it's a great opportunity for you to pick up anything on our website um, with that free shipping, not just the batting. Um, but we will be putting um, links into uh, the recording as well as to where you can go and shop for the batting and uh, make sure that everybody has access. But I certainly know that this has been a lot of great information, Stephanie. We really appreciate the opportunity to have you talk to us. It was wonderful. And I mean, what a delight to be able to uh, to talk to all the Iowa quilters. For those of you who don't know, uh, my husband is from Iowa. And when Heidi first put my picture up with the lecture, um, my husband's cousin called her <laughs> to say, hey, what's my cousin, my cousin's uh, wife doing up on the screen there? Um, so if you're here, Kathy, hello. It's nice to see you. And I know uh, his aunt Linda was also here today. Um, so uh, hopefully I know some other people. Uh, we know a lot of people in Iowa. He has a really big family. Um, so again, it's Heidi, thank world. you very much for having me. And uh, I hope that everyone learned a lot. Um, I will go on to the Facebook uh, where the recording is posted. So if anybody has questions, you can post them there too. I'll monitor that for a few days. Um, and I hope you learned a ton and had some fun. And I can't wait to see how everybody uses the... Uh, the batting and quilts. If you follow us on Facebook and Instagram and you tag us, all one word, Hobbs Batting with a hashtag symbol, um, we actually love to see your work. And sometimes I'll reach out and ask you if I can share it in a presentation because it's really fun for people to see other people's work, not just our work. So thank you. That is awesome. Well, thanks everybody. And we'll look forward to seeing you um, online or in person at Hidden Schick Studio. So until the next time we see you, see you um, be creative. All right. Bye-bye. Thank you.